Hey, Dr. Leung. Oh, hey. Can you tell me about MPOX? Sure, what do you want to know about it? What is MPOX? MPOX is a, what we call a zoonotic virus. So it transfers from an animal reservoir to humans. And it's caused by a virus known as monkeypox. And it, the reason it's called monkeypox is because it was originally identified in lab monkeys. It was first identified in lab monkeys in 1958. And then subsequently in 1970s, that's when we identified the first human case. This is not a new virus. In fact, it's closely related to another virus that we know a lot about, is smallpox. And after smallpox was eradicated, it's thought that that is one of the contributing factors to why we're seeing increasing resurgence of the virus called monkeypox, but the disease known as mpox now. If it started in lab monkeys, how did it get to humans? It can be transmitted from other animals because after it was identified in lab monkeys, we then found out that there is a natural reservoir in the environment. It's thought to be possibly rodents or squirrels, but it's not proven what the natural reservoir for this virus is in the environment. What are the most common symptoms of mpox? Mpox doesn't present uh, very specifically initially. During what we call the invasive phase, people can have classically fever, myalgias, fatigue, respiratory symptoms. So that's not very specific. After that phase, people can develop skin lesions. So these skin lesions look like pox-like lesions, meaning they are either fluid-filled or pus-filled. They start to scab over, and they could present on any part of the body. Once it gets into humans, is it dangerous? So there is uh, dangers associated with monkeypox. So not only does it cause a respiratory disease, it causes skin disease. And because it, the virus can start to spread in the blood, you can have complications from that, including more severe complications like encephalitis, and then secondary infections that occur from there. And there is case for fatality rates, so meaning people die from this but it really depends on many factors what the case fatality rates are. Is it treatable? The treatment is mostly supportive therapy, and that means trying to control the pain from the lesions, preventing the lesions from cause getting secondarily infected, but also depending on the number of lesions people uh, and where the lesions are, people can have poor oral intake, dehydration, and so forth. So the medications are mostly gonna be for symptom management. There are studies looking at antiviral medications, but so far the antiviral medication known as tecoviramat, which has been uh, studied for this disease recently, has not, uh, in, in one of the studies that's just recently kind of uh, been reported, it does not show that it's that effective. How can someone protect themselves from getting mpox? What we need to do is try to identify where the main uh, areas of transmission are and treat it at the source, to contain the outbreak at the source. And right now, what we're seeing is that the countries that are most impacted are in the, the DRC and some of the neighboring countries uh, around there. So like Burundi has an ongoing outbreak and Rwanda, Kenya has identified cases, for example. So we need to maximize the control efforts there, including providing vaccine, and identifying who's affected through identifying contact tracing and diagnostics. Who's eligible for that vaccine? So depending where you are in the world, but in Canada, uh, because the vaccine is stockpiled for smallpox emergencies or potential bioterrorist threats from smallpox, the vaccine is currently given to select groups, including people in the military. But because of the outbreak, identifying the risk, mostly being through sexual transmission, among uh, gay, bisexual, MSM, and sex trade workers, the vaccine is currently uh, offered to those high-risk groups. Why is there an mpox epidemic? When we first identified uh, mpox back in 1958, the first human case was only identified in the 1970s, mm -hmm. and that was in now what's known as the Democratic Republic of the Congo, previously known as Zaire. And then it spread to other African countries. but because of the spread over time in places that didn't have resources, there wasn't very many studies done on this. There wasn't a lot of focus on trying to control the disease because from when they saw human transmission, the transmission chains were pretty short, meaning that it didn't expand to a lot of different people over time. However, in 2022, that's when it became well known in the media because we saw 
multi-country spread over a hundred countries of an mpox strain that caused disease predominantly in men and from that outbreak most of the men who were affected were identified as gay bisexual men who have sex with men once the virus got into a community or a network it started to spread within the network through sexual transmission but what we failed to do was try to look back at where the disease was uh, affecting the most people still, which was in areas like the DRC and neighboring countries. And uh, in the last two years, there's been a surge never seen before of the number of cases and the transmission changed. How does MPOX spread? So really to, to boil it down, there are multiple ways that MPOX spreads. We can think of skin to skin contact, whether it's mouth to mouth, mouth to skin, or direct skin to skin contact. And that occurs, will occur during sexual activity. But you can also have inhalation. So that can be from uh, someone speaking or coughing and inhaling these, the, the virus. Because it's a bloodborne virus, uh, you can also get it through um, maternal to, to fetal transmission. But I think what we learned from that outbreak is that although it could be spread by sexual transmission, the original ways this virus was spread was not through sex as the main cause. Um, in Africa, the transmission modes of the virus were multiple, including um, hunting and slaughtering animals. The other way was through household transmission, through living in the same space, sharing things in the environment, sharing utensils, close skin-to-skin -skin contact, and so that resulted in, in transmission in family clusters. But then what we saw more recently after the global sort of uh, public health emergency of international concern in 2022 was declared over, we still saw transmission of this uh, Mpox virus in, in countries. So in Canada, for example, we still had cases in Vancouver, in, in Toronto recently, there's been an upsurge of cases related to sexual transmission. If people want to find out more, where can they look? The sources of information should be from uh, public health agencies. So I would suggest that if you are in Canada, you can look at the Public Health Agency of Canada for more information. You can also get updates uh, in terms of the situational report of where the disease is spreading and, and what the uh, global community is doing through the WHO website. Those resources where you can get more information will be linked below. Awesome. Thanks, Dr. Young. You're welcome. Thank you.